This time, let's look at a tank. It's a rectangular tank, and it has a hole in it. It's full of water. We use this little symbol to show that free surface. And water is going to come pouring out through the side of the tank. So let's consider this location two, where that stream is coming out of the tank, and this location one, the top surface of the tank. We can follow a particle as it goes along a streamline down here and eventually out through this tank wall to location two. And it'll be following that path all along the way. This is water, our usual fluid. The air pressure up here, P1, is at atmospheric pressure. And down here at P2, we're also open to the atmosphere. So we're at atmospheric pressure. And if this elevation isn't too different, then the atmospheric pressure won't be very different because it's, it's air, so there's not going to be a large change in pressure. If this elevation difference is 15 meters, then we'd like to know how fast the water is going to be going as it comes out the side of the tank. We can do that by applying Bernoulli's equation. We can look at location one and location two, and the energies at those two locations have to be the same. So, Z1 plus P1 over rho g plus V1 squared over 2g, the total energy at location one, must be equal to Z2 plus P2 over rho g plus V2 squared over 2g. Now, because we've chosen this location up here on the surface, we have the advantage that we know that it's atmospheric pressure, and we also know that because this tank is much bigger than the hole in the side, that the velocity up here is very low. It's moving, but it's moving very slowly. So V1 approximately equal to zero. We can get rid of that term. Pressure at two is atmospheric. Pressure at one is atmospheric. So those two pressures are the same. P1 equal to P2 equal to atmospheric pressure. We're left now with just the difference between Z1 and Z2 and the velocity at location 2. So what's going to happen is all the potential energy of elevation here is being turned into kinetic energy of motion down here. So we can rearrange and get that V2 squared is equal to 2g times Z1 minus Z2. And that's going to be the 15 meters elevation difference here that we knew. So V2 equal to the square root of 2 times g, 9.8, times 15 meters. And if we punch that into our calculators, I get 17.1 meters per second. So the water will come out of this hole at 17.1 meters per second. Now suppose we also had another hole in the tank further down here. This is location 3. And water's pouring out of here. You've also got a jet coming out and it's falling due to gravity. And this location is another three meters lower than the previous location. We can take another streamline with another location one. And here's location three. We can follow that streamline down here. Comes out the side wall of the tank. It's going to go faster than the fluid flowing up here. And V3, if we punch it in with 18 meters instead of 15 meters, turns out to be 18.8 meters per second. We can write Bernoulli's equation along this streamline. We can write Bernoulli's equation along this streamline. Having an additional hole in the tank wall here isn't gonna change what happens at location two at all. We can write Bernoulli's equation on one streamline, Bernoulli's equation on the other streamline, and both of those will apply, provided we follow a streamline and we have no significant energy losses along the way.